In the event of a fire on board and upon the activation of the fire alarm, the ship's crew must assemble with their respective teams at the muster station. Once the headcount is taken, the teams proceed to their fire stations as per the muster list and perform their allocated duties. A general cargo ship loads a consignment of tea, cotton and rubber from the Indian subcontinent for St. Petersburg, Russia. The owner gets a voyage policy insurance cover through his broker in London. The ship also loads a consignment of 250 barrels of sulfuric acid from Skikda, Algeria. When the ship is off the coast of Netherlands, the master receives a message from the ship's superintendent to proceed to Bremerhaven Roads to pick up fuel oil heater spares arranged through the local agents to be supplied by launch. He takes a detour and enters the German Bight TSS to approach Bremerhaven. The ship encounters poor visibility due to fog, rough sea and heavy swells. The cargo lashing on board gives way and the chemical barrels come loose, spilling on the tea and rubber consignments, resulting in heavy damage. To make things worse, a fully loaded tanker, outbound from the port of Hamburg, crossing the traffic separation scheme, comes perilously close to the Taj. Despite evasive action by both vessels, to avoid a close quarter situation, Collision is imminent. Both vessels alter course to starboard and sustain a glancing blow on their port sides. The tanker suffers hull damage abreast tank number 4 on the port side and starts leaking oil into the sea. Taj, on the other hand, runs aground in shallow waters on her starboard side damaging her bottom plating. The master transmits a distress message and informs his owners of the situation.
while at sea or when in port, you must have seen different types of ships. Some of them are small, some are very large, while most of them are medium-sized. How do they manage to remain afloat despite their different sizes? Coming up is a simple animation. It will help you understand how a ship floats in water while a pin sinks. You will now look at a real-time incident which will allow you to appreciate the need for the study of ship stability. A heavy lift ship was berthed on its starboard side. A generator was to be loaded on board. The crew was familiar with this operation to be carried out. This was one such routine cargo operation where everything was going as per plan. Till this happened. What could have gone wrong? As a ship's deck officer, knowledge on the basics of ship stability is vital to prevent such incidents. On completion of this course, you will be able to explain the basic principles of stability, determine the effects of loading, discharging, and shifting weight on the center of gravity and center of buoyancy of a ship, Describe list, trim, and free surface effect. Derive formula for list. Solve problems related to list, trim, and free surface correction. Define the conditions of equilibrium. Describe statical stability. Describe inclining experiment. While at sea, or when in port, you must have seen different types of ships. Some of them are small, some are very large, while most of them are medium-sized. While at sea, or when in port, you must have seen different types of ships. Some of them are small, some are very large, while most of them are medium-sized. How do they manage to remain afloat despite their different sizes? Coming up is a simple animation. It will help you understand how a ship floats in water while a pin sinks. You will now look at a real-time incident which will allow you to appreciate the need for the study of ship stability. A heavy lift ship was berthed on its starboard side. A generator was to be loaded on board. The crew was familiar with this operation to be carried out. This was one such routine cargo operation where everything was going as per plan. Till this happened. What could have gone wrong? As a ship's deck officer, knowledge on the basics of ship stability is vital to prevent such incidents. On completion of this course, you will be able to explain the basic principles of stability, determine the effects of loading, discharging, and shifting weight on the center of gravity and center of buoyancy of a ship, Describe list, trim, and free surface effect. Derive formula for list. Solve problems related to list, trim, and free surface correction. Define the conditions of equilibrium. Describe statical stability. Describe inclining experiment.
This is a car carrier, which capsized due to wrong loading and loss of stability. This car carrier capsized in rough weather due to loss of stability. This bulk carrier is listed due to wrong ballast operations. This small bulk carrier is listed due to flooding in tanks. This container ship is experiencing rough weather near coast. This car carrier capsized in rough weather due to loss of stability. This ferry capsized in a severe typhoon. This ship had ice formation on the deck, resulting in an unstable state of the ship. The timber in the cargo had absorbed water on deck, resulting in an unstable state. The emergency signal is composed of seven short blasts followed by one long blast on the ship's whistle and internal alarm system. The abandoned ship signal is given verbally by the ship's master over the PA system. It is never given by automatic means or with recorded media.
Initial preparations. Make fast toggle painter ship drain plugs. Remove harbor pins. Disconnect electrical charging cable. Bring in EPIRB and SART. Board wearing life jacket when instructed. Sit and fasten seat belts. Preparation for launching. Release gripes. Secure hatches. Open vents if in safe atmosphere. Close vents if in dangerous atmosphere. Lower boat to water. Check that there is no obstruction below the boat. Release the brake by pulling the handle inside the boat. Release gently to avoid jerks. Lower at constant speed. On landing in water. Keep the brake open until the falls are released. Release the falls. If falls do not disengage, operate emergency release by breaking the glass. Move the lever to the green zone and release the falls. Letting go. Open air supply and water spray valves if in dangerous atmosphere. Start the engine release toggle painter when ready to move. Steer the boat away from the ship. Actions once in the water. Look for and rescue anyone in the water. Switch on EPIRB and SART. Muster other boats and life rafts. Stream sea anchor when well away from the ship. Before lowering the lifeboat, the following actions are to be carried out. Ensure that the boat plugs are in position. Remove the harbor safety pin. Rig one painter each from the forward and after the boat to the ship to prevent the boat from drifting away. Release the grips at each end of the boat. Lift the handbrake and control the speed lowering with the handbrake. Lower the boat to the embarkation deck. Allow the boat to be brought in by the tricing pendant. Ensure not to be overrun and prevent the weight of the boat from transferring to the tricing pendant. Fasten the boat to the ship using the bowsing tackles. Release the tricing pendant. Embark the boat. Slacken the bowsing tackles and disconnect it from the boat. Start the lifeboat engine. Lift the handbrake to lower the boat into water. Unhook the boat when waterborne. Release the painters to move away from the ship. Lifeboat hooks should be operated after the boat has been launched. When the boat is waterborne, the hydrostatic release unit triggers open the safety release catch. Remove the safety pin. Pull the lever to open position. Check if the hooks are released and clear. To engage the boat, hook the block and lock the safety plate. Push the handle to lock position and put in the safety pin. Check the block visually. Heave the boat above the water level and check if the hooks can bear its weight. Check whether the closed marks are in line with the safety catch. Manual Launching Preparation Launch the life raft when all are ready to board. Make fast painter to a strong point. Release the lashings. Launching life raft. 
Check for any obstruction in the water. Throw the life raft in the water. Inflating the life raft. Pull the painter until you feel it is stuck. Then tug it harder until it inflates. Pull the life raft alongside. Writing the life raft if the life raft opens upside down or capsized. Turn the life raft until facing the wind. Stand on the CO2 bottle and grab the writing strap. Lean back and pull the writing strap using own weight and wind. When it starts to fall back, move away from the life raft. Boarding the life raft. Use the boarding ladder to board. Jump onto the life raft only from lower heights and when no one is inside the life raft. If unable to bring the life raft closer to ship, enter the water from lower level as possible, preferably from upstream, then swim towards the life raft. Moving away from the ship. Ensure everyone is accounted for. Using the knife provided near the entrance, cut the painter. Using the paddles, move quickly and away from the ship. Automatic release of life raft. When there is no time to manually release the life raft, the crew should wear the life jacket and jump into the water and swim away from sinking ship. When the life raft is 3 to 4 meters in the water, the hydrostatic release unit will release the life raft from its lashing. The painter is pulled as the ship sinking and opened the CO2 bottle. After inflation, weak link attached to the painter will part and the life raft will float up free from the ship. Wait for help. Stream the sea anchor post lookout. Distribute anti-seasickness tablets. Switch on EIPRB and SART. During cold or rough weather, to protect the crew from sea spray and to keep them warm, close the entrance except for a small area for lookout. Survival. Read and explain the book on survival technique to the survivors. Check for any leaks and repair any damage. Bail out water and sponge dry the floor. Fill in more air in the chamber for more insulation in cold climate. Issue anti-seasickness tablets and administer first aid for the needy.
Life buoys are made of buoyant material and are brightly colored and ring-shaped. They are placed at strategic locations around the ship to ensure easy access in an emergency. Life buoys are required to be stowed in such a way so as to be capable of being easily cast loose and not permanently secured. They are to be located on each side of the ship and are to be fitted with a buoyant line not less than twice the height at which it is stowed. They are also fitted with retro-reflective tapes for visibility. The name and port of registry of the ship is to be stenciled on both sides of the life buoy. At least 50% of the total number of life buoys should be provided with self-igniting lights and two of these should be provided with self-activating smoke signals. The specifications of life buoys are Outer diameter shall not be more than 800 millimeters, 2.6 feet. Inner diameter shall not be less than 400 millimeters, 1.3 feet. Support capacity of 14.5 kilograms, 32 pounds, of iron in fresh water for a period of 24 hours. Mass of 2.5 kilograms, 5.5 pounds or more. Fire resistant for a period of 2 seconds. Sustain a drop from varied heights above the waterline in the lightest seagoing condition or 30 meters, 900 feet. Grab line of length not less than 4 times the outer diameter of the buoy. Life jackets are designed to be worn by the ship's crew before abandoning the ship. They are made with the objective of assisting a person keep his head above the water while floating. They are colored brightly and are stenciled with the name of the ship and the port of registry. They are provided for every adult on board and also include provisions for every child and infant on board, equal to 10% of the crew or greater. Life jackets are provided for watch crew and for use at remotely located survival craft stations. They are placed at accessible locations and are marked with the weight or height or both and are indicated with child or infant symbols. The requirements of life jackets include the following. Loss of buoyancy is not more than 5% after submersion in fresh water for more than 24 hours. Fitted with a whistle. Fitted with a white light of luminous intensity not less than 0.75 candela, effective for a period of at least 8 hours. Life Jacket Sizing Criteria Immersion suits are designed to help reduce the loss of body heat. They are provided for every person on board a cargo ship. Immersion suits are provided at places of work and in watch-keeping areas located away from the immersion suit storage area. They are stored in readily accessible and clearly marked locations. The requirements of immersion suits include the following. Capable of being unpacked and donned without assistance within two minutes. Fire resistant for at least a period of two seconds. Loss of buoyancy not more than 5% after submersion in fresh water for more than 24 hours. Cover the whole body with the exception of the face. Covering for the hands and head may be provided by separate gloves and a hood 
permanently attached to the suit. Ability to sustain a jump from a height not less than 4.5 meters 13 feet, into the water without damaging or dislodging the immersion suit. Thermal protective aids are designed as a suit or a bag made of waterproof material having low thermal conductance. They are made of durable and insulating material and are designed to cover the wearer's entire body, except for the area of the mouth, nose, and eyes. Thermal protective aids are colored brightly to enable easy detection. They are provided with gloves that facilitate the wearer to close and open the zipper or carry out other tasks. The requirements of thermal protective aids include the following. Thermal conductance not to be more than 7,800 watts per square meter per Kelvin, W over M squared K. Capable of being donned without the assistance in a rescue boat or in a survival craft. Does not hinder the swimming capability of the wearer. Capable of being removed in water in not more than two minutes. Effective in temperatures between minus 30 degrees Celsius to plus 20 degrees Celsius. Marked with the manufacturer's name and instructions for use. GMDSS approved ships are required to carry the following as a minimum requirement. Three portable VHF two-way radio telephones. Two search and rescue transponders. One EPIRB operating on 406 megahertz. Survivors should carry a GMDSS approved VHF two-way radio telephone apparatus. Persons leading the boat stations should carry radios along with spare batteries. Nickel cadmium batteries on the radio set can be recharged after use on board. Spare batteries made of lithium for use in case of an emergency. Lithium batteries cannot be charged. SART a search and rescue radar transponder, SART, is stowed on a mounting bracket on each side of the bridge. The SART should be carried in the survival craft. It indicates the location of the survival craft to any ship in the immediate vicinity. When the SART is switched on, it goes on to the standby mode. Once triggered, it can be identified by 12 blips on the radar screen. When viewed from a distance within one nautical mile, the blips turn into concentric rings on the radar screen. The detecting range of the SART improves with height. The SART is powered by a battery. It has a test switch to check its functionality. The battery has a life of about three to four years. Operating and testing instructions are marked on the exterior of the SART. EPIRB A satellite emergency position indicating radio beacon EPIRB should be carried on all seagoing ships of 300 gross tons and over. The EPIRB transmits a distress alert through a polar orbiting satellite or by satellites operating in the geostationary INMARSAT coverage. An EPIRB transmits a distress call when activated 
to rescue coordination centers through local user terminals. Line Throwing Apparatus A line throwing apparatus is specifically designed to help deploy a buoyant line from the ship to the shore or to another ship. A line throwing apparatus should be capable of throwing a line with reasonable accuracy. It should have at least four projectiles and four lines. Each projectile should be able to carry a line of at least 230 meters, 750 feet in length. Each line should have a breaking strength of not less than 2 kilo newtons. Operating instructions are printed on the external part of the apparatus. The entire assembly is housed inside a water-resistant casing. Signaling Equipment Pyrotechnics are part of the ship's distress signaling equipment. They are used to attract the attention of ships in the vicinity besides helping locate survivors. Pyrotechnics consists of rocket parachute flares, hand flares, and buoyant smoke floats. Each lifeboat and life raft should carry four rocket parachute flares, six hand flares, and two buoyant smoke signals. Rocket Parachute Flares The ship is also to carry 12 rocket parachute flares, which form part of the ship's distress signals. Rocket parachute flares should be housed within a water-resistant container. The operating instructions should be printed on the container. The design of the rocket parachute flare should not cause any discomfort to the person holding it. When fired vertically, the rocket should reach an altitude of at least 300 meters, 984 feet. When the rocket is at its top, it releases a parachute flare of a bright red color with a luminous intensity of 30,000 candelas or more for at least 40 seconds. The rate of descent of the flare should not be more than 5 meters, 16.4 feet per second and should not cause harm to the parachute fittings. Hand Flares Hand flares should be housed within a water-resistant casing. The instructions should be written on the casing. The ignition of the flare should be self-contained and should not cause any discomfort to the person holding the casing and the survival craft. When ignited, the hand flare should burn in a bright red color with a luminous intensity of 15,000 candelas or more for at least one minute. It should continue to burn for 10 seconds when immersed in 100 millimeters, 0.33 feet of water. Buoyant Smoke Floats Buoyant smoke floats should be housed within a water-resistant casing. The operating instructions should be written on the casing. When operated, the smoke float should emit a highly visible colored smoke for at least three minutes. It should not ignite explosively. Smoke floats should continue to emit smoke when submerged in 100 millimeters, 0.33 feet of water for 10 seconds. It should not be swamped in a seaway. Other signaling equipment. Other signaling equipment in survival crafts includes one waterproof electric torch and a daylight signaling mirror. The electric torch should be suitable for Morse signaling. It should have one set of spare batteries and one spare bulb. 
the daylight signaling mirror should be provided with instructions on its use. It should be capable of signaling to the ships and aircrafts in the vicinity.